Today, we're building a patcher preset. This transforms any sound into an explosion of grains. Loosely inspired by the Chase Bliss Mood guitar pedal, it lets you freeze, blur, and recontextualize your sounds. I wanted to make something that lets me stop thinking about parameters and just enjoy the sound design session. Press record in Edison, jam, play around with the settings, and sit back and listen to what's happening. Right, enough of that, time to build. The brain of the patches emerges, a granular effect that lets you transform your input into controllable grain streams. Apart from that, we'll be using the stock delay, convolver reverb, and glitch shifter from our windows to close the effect chain. So the signal chain is pretty straightforward. We've got the input coming from FL Studio, then into Emergence, Delay, Convolver Reverb, Glitch Shifter, and that goes into the limiter and out to FL Studio. The only learning curve is activating and connecting the parameters from the surface control to the macro knobs. But after you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. Let's start with a sound source to hear what's happening with the signal. Now let's add patchers and effects to our mixer. As you can see, the module from FL Studio is where our signal starts, and to FL Studio is the end of the signal chain. You can connect them by clicking the yellow dot and dragging it to another one to close the signal flow. Now as you connect these two modules, you start hearing your audio input. The surface controls where we will add the macro knobs and sliders to change the plugin parameters. To access the surface control, you need to change the tab at the left hand corner from map to surface. But now let's add the plugins and connect them together. Let's disconnect the other plugins apart from emergence so that they don't distract us while we set it up for success. First let's increase the buffer size to have more room for freezing the sound. Then let's set up the second stream's pitch to an octave up. And the third to an octave down. Now head on to the surface tab and let's add some knobs, buttons and sliders. Make sure that the wrench icon is selected if you want to add or edit your controls. We need three main knobs to control the buffer volume, grain volume and grain amount. Right click and select the knob. You can customize it if you want it to look pretty. I'm going with the default one for the purpose of the video. Just rename them so that you don't get lost in the process. Now let's go back to the map. As you can see now the control surface has three red dots which means that we can connect them to a parameter. You can connect it to emergence and pick the parameter you want from the list. But there's a second way which I think is more intuitive. Open up emergence, right click the parameter you want to assign to your macro and select activate. As you can see, now we have a parameter input that we can connect to the macro. In the upper left corner, in FL Studio, you can see which parameter you're connecting to which input, and that's why it's crucial to name your macros correctly. Now let's see if it works in the surface menu. Make sure the wrench is off if you want to use the controls. Okay, so now we need to make four buttons, the freeze button and the grain stream activators. I just had to clean it up real quick. Now let's go back to Emergence, activate the Freeze button and the Grain Streams. Again connect the corresponding macros to the right parameters. Now we need some additional control over each Grain Stream. We want to be able to control the time knob, reverse probability and the volume of each stream. So now let's add three knobs in the reach stream button. Okay, so zero stands for standard pitch, plus one octave up, minus one for octave down. To minimize the risk of wrong patching later on, you can name them however you want. Now let's activate the time, reverse probability and volume of each stream. then connect them to the macros. It's all working now so we can move on to the next stage. The next thing we need is a way to control the dry-wet signal of the delay and the reverb. 
To do that, we need to connect the signal to the effect chain and then out to the FL Studio module. Let's open up the delay and activate the wet signal and the delay time on the knob. I recommend selecting the keep pitch option to not lose your mind later on. Now time for two new knobs in the surface tab. One for the dry wet delay signal and one for the delay time. And now let's connect them. Now we need to do a very similar thing with the Convolver Reverb, but this time we need to activate the dry and the wet signal independently. It's a good idea to be able to blend the signal depending on the level of wash we need for the sound. You know what we have to do now. The last thing we need to do is to add a glitch option to the patch or preset. So head on to the glitch shifter VST and activate the dry wet signal, trim and feedback knobs. Create three new knobs, label them and then let's connect them and see what happens to the sound. Now there's this clicking sound that we can get rid of by setting the Titan knob in the glitch shifter. And we're good. Now you can customize it, make it look nicer. There are tons of beautiful patch or presets that you can take inspiration from, but that's not what we're doing today. Now let's hear it in action.
And there we have it. This preset is a cool starting point to explore patch and build on top of it if your CPU allows for it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.